Well, hello again, boat lovers. I'm so excited. It is finally launch day. Well, not really, but in a sense it is. So many of you have been asking all the obvious questions with this unique flat bottom boat. Will it float? Will it tip over? Will it sink? How will it perform through the water, etc.? So as a bit of fun, I jumped online and I ordered two electric boat engines for a massive amount of, I think the total amount was $30, and I got these two boat engines delivered to my door within 10 days. I've installed them into the model, and we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna launch the model in the swimming pool, and we'll see how she performs. Of course, it won't be a true example of the finished product, but it will give us a bit of an indication. And there's no ballast added to this balsa wood model. The only weight in the center of the boat is the little battery pack. So just four little batteries, and that's all the weight that's in there. So let's have a bit of fun, get into that. Let's see how it goes. Hello boat lovers, welcome to the channel. My name's Steve and I'm single-handedly building Dragonfly. She's a 53 foot or 16.2 meter flat bottom wooden river boat. I've designed her specifically for the inland and sheltered waters of the River Murray here in South Australia. Join me each week to watch the mayhem and madness of one man single-handedly building a massive flat bottom wooden boat. Well, I don't know about you boat lovers, but I would call that a raging success. Really happy with that. Um, absolutely thrilled with the way the little model steered just by using both engines, one forward, one reverse, etc. So a lot of fun. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get back into the boat build. Good morning again, boat lovers. Great to be back in the boat shed again today. I'm going to attempt to tackle this aft section of the boat. There is a outdoor cabin that goes here. It has a solid roof, but it has open sides, which will eventually have uh, awnings around it, drop clears and mosquito netting. And then behind that, we have the aft deck of the boat, which is going to have 
the two outboard engines hidden underneath it. So the boat's really propelled by two 60 horsepower four stroke outboards, but they'll be hidden under the aft deck. And because of that, it's not as simple as just hanging an outboard bracket on the back of the transom and putting an outboard on. So I spent quite a lot of time last night mocking up how it's going to work. So a bit of cardboard, a bit of blue masking tape, and I'll try and give you a bit of a, an indication from my little model here of what's going to happen. All right. So this is a mock-up of the back of the boat, the area that I'm in now. The transom will be here, it's here, and on the top here, this is the aft deck. I haven't put the flared sides in the model. It comes out to about here on each side. But I've had to factor in fitting a few things in this back section. Gas bottles, which will go in here. So completely sealed compartment, vented out through the sides. You can probably see the cutout at the bottom where the outboards will hang. Here and here. So that's where the legs of the outboards will be. And then there'll be a built-in section that the outboard actually hangs on. So this, this section here is where the outboard will be hanging from. And that will be a completely sealed section, which adds a whole lot of strength to this entire area. But I also had to fit in my fuel tanks. So the fuel tanks are going in the center here down low, and they go right up to here. So one of the, the issues was how would I get those tanks in and out? And if I ever needed to get them out, if there was an issue, I need to allow for that. So initially I just had one tank, but by having two, they can fit in through the top here First one can go in and slide back. In fact, I can probably show you a little bit of how that's gonna work. The plan is that there'll be a hatch in the top. The first tank will go down like so, and then slide in all the way back there like that. And then the second tank will just drop down into place like so. There'll be a section over the top here that's sealed and a little compartment here for my generator, which will have the exhaust going out the back. That way, all the noise will be very back of the boat, and I'll insulate all this with sound insulation. So from here forward, you shouldn't hear much of those outboards at all. So that's a lot of mucking about to get this little model of what I'm gonna do at the back here. So it's pretty tricky, but hopefully, um, I've got my head around it now. I went down to a um, marine place yesterday and had a chat with the mechanic there who does the outboard installations and he was a fantastic help. He gave me a document that had all the measurements and specs on there for these particular outboards. I think I'm gonna go with the Yamaha F60 high thrust four strokes. High thrust being the larger workman style propellers with different um, gearing, which gives you a lot of power and thrust as opposed to high speed. Because on a vessel like this, I'm not going to be going very fast, but I want really good control. And so that's what I'm going for. So hopefully I can make a start on this. First thing is to start getting these sides on back to here. And uh, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to just kind of wing it as usual. I'm sure it'll unfold as, as I start to put things together. Alrighty, I better get to it.
while I have a little break from that uh, soaring and dust and stuff, I need to share a little story with you um, of something that happened on the weekend that I thought was quite funny. Well, not funny at the time. Uh, with young Maple, we thought we would take her for her first trip to the ocean, down to the beach to uh, see what she's like with the water. And as a last minute thing, I thought, oh, I'll take the GoPro camera with me. That's the little camera I use for doing all this video. And I got the stand and the camera and a few accessories and the power lead. And I had it with me while I was putting Maple into the car. And um, long story short, I suppose, is that um, along the way on the freeway, I mean, this is an hour, most of that being on a freeway at, at high speed. I heard some flapping noises outside the car and I thought I'd pick up a stick or something like that, perhaps in one of the wheels or something. So a few minutes later, I decided to pull over to get out and have a look underneath the car. Couldn't see anything. And then to my surprise, sitting right on the edge of the middle section of the roof of my four wheel drive, completely exposed with the camera, the stand and the lead and the accessories all sitting on the roof of the car. And I couldn't believe it, how they did not blow off or fall off, I have no idea. But I just grabbed them all, took them back into the car and thought, well, wow, that's amazing. So I guess the moral of the story is don't leave your camera on top of the car and go for an hour's drive on the freeway. All is well, Maple had a great time at the beach. I couldn't believe it. She was so excited. She literally could not contain herself. She was like a whole bundle of legs all going in different directions. And I'm not sure if we, we got any footage of that. Yeah, Maple loved the beach and was just so excited. It was a pleasure to see. I haven't got her in the shed with me because she's definitely a chewer at this stage. And of course, there are a lot of things in here that would be dangerous for her. So I have to wait a little while um, until she's past that full on chewing stage before I have her here in the shed with me for any length of time. Anyway, I have to be able to keep an eye on her because although I try and keep the floor fairly tidy, I mean, just a little thing like sniffing around for example, where I do mix the glue up, there could be a bit of glue powder on the floor or whatever, and we can't have her sniffing that into her nose. That would be no good at all. Speaking of which, I think she's actually got something in her nose, maybe a little bit of a grass seed or something, taking her to the vet this afternoon. It's not annoying her a lot, but just enough that we think there might be something there. So better safe than sorry. Today, she's at a puppy minding center where she gets to play with lots of other dogs out in the open, having a ball all day. I'll pick her up about four o'clock this afternoon. She'll be exhausted. I'll take her to the vet and they can have a look and hopefully there's uh, nothing in her nose or if there is, they can get it out. Apart from that, she's doing great and uh, she has, she's turning out to be the most gorgeous little soul. So we're pretty stoked. Anyway, enough of the storytelling. I better get back to it. Alrighty, up and at it. I guess before I get off the roof of the boat, I can turn the camera around and give you a bird's eye view of that section I'm working on and I'll just briefly explain where things go. Here we go. Okay, bird's eye view. So where the black plastic is on the floor, that whole section there where the black plastic and the orange saw is, that becomes an outside settee area. So the, in fact where the black plastic is has a bench seat running along there and where the orange saw is that's where there will be a table or a dinette if you like with a bench seat each side and that table will drop down to make a double bed and then if we go back a little bit further where you see that edge of the timber which i just ran the saw along where i cut that edge off from there back is the aft deck area which has all the things in it like the gas bottles the fuel tanks and the outboard engines etc so that's the floor plan layout now i just have to do it
gaps. I will get this ready now for wetting out and gluing into place. Cut my backing boards, uh, get everything ready. Then I think I'll have a break, have some lunch and start gluing this in fresh because it's quite a lot of gluing to do. Got all those little honeycombing sections inside so I have to wet out all the edges of those and get a good glue line along there, wet along the bottom edge of the sheet, wet along each surface of this join here and the backing board or the backing block. So it's quite a lot of wetting out and quite a lot of gluing, but it's really quite cool today. Um, so the glue's not gonna go off quickly, which is great. Alrighty, see you after lunch. Okie dokie folks, lunch done. I'll get these backing blocks cut out and get these sides glued into place.
Alrighty, I'll just mock this up a little bit, show you guys where this outdoor settee and seating is going. Can't have too many milk crates, so it would seem. So this area will become, as I say, like an outdoor area. Open sides, solid roof, drop down clear awnings, mosquito netting. I had that on the last boat that I built and it's um, pretty much identical because it functions really well. Uh, your table in the middle, it drops down to make a nice double bed there so you can sleep under the stars. That should give you a bit of an idea of where things are going. Obviously a little bit taller than this. So I have seating here, seating there, a nice dining table here, which as I say will drop down to make this area a really good sized double bed. And then a bench seat along there. I'm thinking that we'll put a built-in ice box here under this seat because the refrigerator is just here, but you can never have enough places for drinks through summer. So I think in this outdoor area, that would be an ideal place to build in an ice box. And I can rig up some sort of drain, hopefully, to go out the side. And that would be really convenient if sitting here at the dining table, need some cool drinks over there for the ice box, that should be terrific. That would also make a bunk a bit narrow, it'd be about 600 or two feet wide. So a little bit narrow, but you know, a slim person or a child's bunk, no problem there. And for the grown-ups, or anybody who cares to partake in nature can have the double bed made up out here, looking out three sides of view, solid roof, mosquito netting for when we need it, be fantastic. And of course, the, the bulkhead goes across here. And from here back is that model that I showed you yesterday of where the outboards, the gas bottles, fuel tanks, and a little generator go all under that area there. These sides will end up at about that height and then step down a little bit going to the aft deck. A meter from the bottom of the boat, so the aft deck ends up at that height there. So that height there will be the aft deck. And of course, these sides will stick up a little bit here to give us an edge around this outdoor area. So that should function really well. And that means that once this is built in, this aft deck area will be the same amount of space that I've got here except it'll go out a little bit wider because of the flared sides. And that's gonna be a great area to hang a barbecue on the railing, have a little access steps down to the swim platform. And because these engines, when tilted, the props will protrude out past the transom about that much. It means you'll be able to step down to the little platform in the middle and access those props if they get weed or anything like that on them or just to check them, can access those really easily. So that's the plan. As I say, I can't have too many milk crates. They've come in so handy, these things, they're great. So I have to now make up uh, a couple of these. This is one that didn't work very well. Probably shown you these before, but got to make up a couple of rounded corners just for one to go here, one to go over here. And then of course the seats themselves overlap at the top by 100 mil, it's about four or five inches, comes out and back. I don't know what I've done. This doorway here is actually meant to be slightly over that way. I don't know whether I can move it or not. And the reason I say that is because this bench seat should actually come this way a little bit, out to about here. But if I bring that this way, then we're gonna encroach on the end of this, which is the double bed, and I don't wanna do that. So this seat might start off a little bit narrow here, and then go into the full width. We're only talking about that much, so it's it's not a big deal. And I think even, even with a thin seat here, this would be a great spot. Sitting back like this, if you're cruising along the river, that would be the right height there to put your arm on, because this will be a little bit higher. Great view, sit on top of the ice box, guard the drinks, and uh, that should work really well. The dining table, I could probably put an extension at the end of it, so if we've got quite a few people sitting around, you could have perhaps four people comfortably sitting at the table there, and then a couple here if we have an extension to the table, or maybe just some freestanding mobile stools that can operate as tables for people to eat here as well. It is a boat, not a house. So, 
Unfortunately, I don't really feel like making up more of these, but I can't put these bench seat places in place until I have these made. They recess into the ends of these a little bit and then measure exactly for the pieces that go in there. So I'll get all this made, everything in place, then I'll put this bulkhead on here. As I said when I was taping yesterday or the day before, there's no point in me putting this back bulkhead in now because if I do, I've got to step over everything to glue all this furniture into place. So I might as well get this done, everything I possibly can in here, and then put the backing on. Then I'll be finished doing most of the construction inside except for second fix and uh, fit outs. Alrighty, better get to it. If there's some background noise going on, it is raining and in this tin shed it gets really loud so it probably just sounds like white noise in the background but that is actually light rain falling on the roof and there's a chainsaw going off in somebody's yard in the background and all the birds are making lots of noises because it's raining and I guess that's what birds do.
got my gloves on because I need to be ready to mix some glue up fairly quickly after doing this. I've got everything ready over on the mixing bench. The main thing here is I don't get moisture on the other side of these boards. Just steaming this front face enough to be able to bend them around at right angles. We'll see how we go. I could use boiling water or I could put them fully in the steamer but this is the, probably the neatest way of doing it without getting the underside wet. Okay, boat lovers, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for everybody that's been watching and subscribing. I can't believe that we've gone from a couple of thousand views on each video to something like nearly 50,000 views in the last fortnight. It seems that there are lots and lots of boat lovers out there who enjoy watching boat building videos and I'm just amazed that you guys seem to enjoy what I'm doing. I certainly have a ball making these videos. I'm just thrilled that so many of you are watching and enjoying them. Please remember to subscribe and hit the like button because that's really good for my channel. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys again in the next week or so with another video. Alrighty, take care and we shall see you soon.